Welcome to the Efficientpreneur Show with Ahmed al Karemli, where you learn how to build and scale your business profitability online with less time, effort, and cost, so you can enjoy a fulfilling lifestyle. Hi everyone, AK here, and welcome to the Efficientpreneur Show. Today I have with me Amanda Goldman Petrie. Uh, she is an online coaching expert and helps coaches to scale their businesses online. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you. So, how did you start in this world? Wh what's your story? Oh, my story is loaded. <laughs> Basically, uh, my my backstory is that I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, which for any of you uh, TV show junkies, that's where The Wire is based on. This episode is brought to you by the Efficientpreneur Club. The Efficientpreneur Club is a private and affordable one-on-one -on -one business coaching club for business owners and entrepreneurs who want to build and scale their business profitability and performance with less time, effort, and cost, and without risking their freedom. So whether you are still figuring out the right business model, strategy, and pricing, or you need help to improve your funnels, ads, sales, and conversion, then the Efficientpreneur Club is for you. Your business challenges are not going to fix themselves unless you fix them today. And the consequences of not addressing that today is your business profitability and performance will not improve and your relationships and health will continue to be affected. It's no wonder that building and scaling a business becomes so stressful over time, but it doesn't have to be that way. The Efficientpreneur Club will help you take your business to the next level with a private and affordable one-on-one -on -one coaching with me personally, tailored to your unique needs. I will help you clarify your direction, set a strategic action plan, and guide you step by step to build and scale your business efficiently. The Efficientpreneur Club will also provide access to an extensive how-to video library, the most highly recommended tools, and a supportive community of like-minded business owners to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice. The Efficientpreneur Club is the perfect place to be if you want to maximize your profits, minimize your workload, and scale your freedom and efficiency. So check it out at EfficientpreneurClub.com and say bye-bye to generic courses, secretive gurus, and expensive mentors. So if you know anything about that TV show, you know Baltimore is not a very good neighborhood. We like to call it Bloody Moore Murderland. Um, so as you can imagine, it wasn't the best living situation growing up. My biological father was a drug addict. He was in and out of jail. He would take me to bars when I was supposed to be going to the circus. Um, my uh, stepfather, he was abusive to me, my mom, my older brother. And so I never really wanted to be at home. I wanted to find a way out of that life. I never really resonated with the lifestyle that my family chose for themselves or that they were born into and I wanted out. So I became a nerd. I, <laughs> I became a type A overachieving nerd. I buried my head in books and became valedictorian of every school I ever attended and that landed me a full ride scholarship to Johns Hopkins University where I was originally going to become a doctor. I mean Johns Hopkins is the number one med school in the world. so. I thought I was going to become a, not a neuroscientist. Well, life doesn't always work out the way you think it will. And the summer before I was going to campus, I was walking across the street and an 80 year old man driving a minivan going 50 miles an hour hit me. Oh. And my body flew into the intersection where my head was a foot away from being crushed by a passing 18 wheeler. So I spent a week in shock trauma months learning to walk again. I went onto campus, originally in a wheelchair, eventually on a cane, and had to go through my first year or two learning how to walk again, and then my last two years learning how to run again. And as you can imagine, something like that kind of shakes you up a bit. So I started questioning my life's purpose. I started questioning what I wanted to do with my life. And oh, that's my cat. Um, <laughs> it happens to me always the same. <laughs> I've got eight of them, so they're going to interrupt at wow. some point. Um, and so I, my solution was, well, I'm just going to try everything. So I went out and I actually, in my four years at Hopkins, I got three different degrees in Chinese, Russian, and writing. And I still wasn't 100% sold on any of those things as my life's direction. So 
I graduated and found a job as a social media marketing intern. Why, why didn't complete the med school? Why did it continue in that, or, or you just? I did you know? that for a year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know what it was? It was biochem. No, biochem I couldn't do it. Okay. It, it was, it wasn't my jam. They, oh my God, they literally make you memorize at, at Hopkins, memorize every single solitary amino acid that exists, and all of their. You have to be able to diagram the structure for every single solitary one, and that's literally week one. That was day <laughs> one at bio. My, my my first degree is in biology, and I hated it, and I don't know anything about biology, so I remember oh, biochemistry, no. and I and I hate it. <laughs> bio, I love. Bio, I can mm. handle, but the mm. chemistry, oh like at Hopkins, I would talk to other people. You know, because Baltimore is a college town. There's a lot of different colleges around. And what I saw was an entire semester anywhere else was one day at Johns Hopkins. So it moves at light speed. And I just found I couldn't keep up when it came to chemistry specifically. I, <laughs> I have been an A student my entire life. And chemistry, I could not get an A in. Uh, a 33 at Hopkins chemistry is an A. That on the curve. Mm. That that's what it was when I was there. It was absurd. So it was extremely competitive, very very rigorous. And uh, you know, I, I had my first son at 18, uh, my freshman year, and so it just caused me to reevaluate everything. And I said, you know what, Amanda, <laughs> this isn't it. Me, yeah. This isn't it for you. Yeah, it doesn't do it for me. If it did, I would have been doing better. But I wasn't committed to chem. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. So, so you worked I, I, as an intern in social media company you mentioned, or? Yeah. So after I graduated, I started looking on job boards to try to see what would pique my interest, and I found a social media marketing internship with Mara Glazer, who is the Glazer from Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle, a huge internet marketing company, one of the first that ever existed in the internet marketing world, and I took the job loved it. Oh my God, fell in love. And it was the first time that I really felt passionate about something, something that I felt like I could give up everything for it. And that's what I did. I quit grad school. I quit my other jobs and I just solely focused on marketing. I, I, I worked for her for six months and that was all it took for me to be persuaded that this was the life that I wanted. So that was the start of Market Like a Nerd. It was Social media marketing. <laughs> then what happened? You quit and you started your own company or what happened? I started my first business. It was called The Greek Tweak. It was a publishing company for fraternities and sororities. Uh, not very lucrative. No, first time around, I, uh, I built a lot of buzz for myself. But the whole money thing, I didn't quite have a handle on yet. You know, trial the and offer. error, live and learn. <laughs> the offer was not good. What was the problem? I didn't know how to convert traffic into sales. I didn't know how to make offers. And, uh, you know, I, I learned how to build buzz for myself. I learned how to become known in an industry, but not how to translate that, that into money. So that's what I took to my second business. My second business, I served as a virtual assistant doing social media marketing, web design, SEO, because I learned all of that. In my, in my internship and in my uh, first business. And so I just went and started executing that for other business owners. And that business, I hired a coach. So the first one, I didn't, and I really struggled. The second one, I said, you know what? Let me get serious about this. And I hired a coach, and I had my first $10,000 a month in four months when I was just 22. So that was, the, that was the key. I learned traffic first, I learned conversion second, and then I put them together, and that's when the money came in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, still with the same company now, or uh, you build the marketing like a nerd? And, uh, marketing like a nerd. So technically, legally, it is the same company, but it has seen many brands. <laughs> So originally it was virtual assistant Amanda. I was a virtual assistant for, you know, just any sort of entrepreneur, honestly. I wasn't super niched in the beginning. Then I opened up a virtual assistant agency with Mara Glazer because she really believed in me. I was one of her star students. I was one of her star employees. And so we did a joint business called Beth Stam Biz Team, which was still a virtual assistant agency. We ended up parting ways. We didn't really 
mesh well as, as business partners, and then I uh, kept growing Virtual Assistant Amanda. Well, so at some at one point, I got I made $150,000 in four months when I was 23, and I said, you know what? I feel like I'm ready to start coaching. I've learned a whole lot at this point. I want to start sharing what I've learned. And so I started coaching. I made $120,000 in 90 days when I was 20. I think that was when I was 25 at that point. And that's when I became Goldman Petrie Coaching. Really unoriginal and very, very boring. <laughs> but it was my first go around at the coaching. And then at that point, I said, you know what? I've made, I've made six figures now three times in a row. And I, I, I'm settling. I want more. For myself, I want to become really well known. I want to help more people. I want to expand my impact. I want to go to the next level. So I invested probably about six months just working on branding and authority. So I rebranded to market like a nerd, launched a web TV show, launched a podcast, went and got a bunch of publicity, 50 podcasts in 60 days, um, a bunch of feature articles, a bunch of guest blogs, and had this surge of traffic into my business and then I used the conversion techniques that I learned to launch on the back end of all of that and I made $562,000 in so four months. So what's months your focus like? Do you help other coaches to scale mainly or you sell online courses or what's the kind of offers you have in marketing like a nurse? So because I have extensive experience in done for you services and because I have extensive experience in coaching, we've created a very integrated approach. I actually took one of my star students and I brought her her in as my business partner, my co-CEO, her name is Jody Sodini, and she has the same exact background as me. She started out as a virtual assistant, and in coaching with me, she grew all the way into coaching and then came into my business, and now we have these two very uh, strong skills, so we have a very integrated approach where we actually do most of the marketing for you, but it's extremely high level, very, very strategic, and there's a lot of coaching. What's your focus and her focus so some other online business owners or coaches learn from this uh, co-founder you know, experience <laughs> or like, you know, uh, partnership? So when we first uh, partners, she was the COO, meaning she oversaw all of the operations and I oversaw all of the marketing. And we got to a point after about a year or so together where she was just really stepping up when it came to strategy and just she's really because she's become a visionary just like me. And so we recently, probably just in the past two months, actually, uh, promoted her to be co-CEO, which is still something that we're kind of navigating. We're trying to figure out what does that mean. And I, I never this I never why? heard this term co-CEO. Should be one well, CEO. There's not many people who do it. Usually there's a visionary and there's an op uh, operator and there's two very different roles. But she's not an operator. She's a visionary, and that that I think is very normal as you become more and more successful you go through more and more levels of growth you what you are in your mindset and what you like to do and what you become skilled at it changes because i used to be an operator i used to just be an executor like the person who implements and then i was the strategist then i became you know the the operator who kind of oversaw all of the infrastructure and the team and managed the operations to make sure that it worked and then i was like, oh no, you know what, I'm, I'm a visionary. I'm a visionary. And so we both really serve as the CEO, the visionary, and we now have an executive assistant who serves as the operator. And then we have a client concierge who serves as our fulfillment department. And then we have a marketing department that, and, and right now, Jody and I are overseeing the marketing department together but there's, there's multiple team members within the marketing department. Eventually we'll get to the point where we'll actually promote someone from within or, or maybe from outside of the company, we'll see how it goes, um, to become the, the marketing officer who oversees the marketing department. That, that's kind of, that's the next step. <laughs> how do you, how do, you uh, like, do you focus on coaches mainly to grow their businesses or you work with like any offline business to help them convert uh -huh. clients online? or? 
What? No offline unless they're trying to come online. We work with coaches and service providers and that's it. So if you're a health coach, a business coach, a branding coach, a sales coach, a fitness coach, a uh, transformational career coach, any sort of coach or consultant, or a service provider like a virtual assistant, a graphic designer, a website developer, even lawyers who have done a lot of work with lawyers, they're service providers. And that's because that's our, I mean, that's what we've done successfully. So it makes sense that we would work with people that match our success. That's the most ethical way to do it because I can't in, you know, integrity go to like the owner of a restaurant and try to help them grow their restaurant when I've never run a restaurant. I can absolutely apply what I've learned to any business and I feel very confident in my ability to do that. Um, but but you have results to, with, with coaches, so that's why you yes, focus on exactly. it. exactly. I have a proven track record there, so that's what makes the most sense. How, how coaches can build authority like as, as an expert to, to market themselves? Well, so uh, this is a pretty uh, easy question for me to answer because if you remember, I said I spent six months just focusing on that before I launched Market Like a Nerd and had over a half million dollar launch. So that was something I was very, very intentional about, very conscious about. Uh, I wanted to have name recognition. I wanted to have brand recognition. I wanted to be able to seamlessly sell because of that at premium prices. And so what I did was a combination of a few things. Uh, number one, I created a very standout, memorable visual brand, market like a nerd. You know, that you've never heard anything like that. It's very original. If you go to the website, it's extremely unique, very dynamic, um, memorable. You know, we have people who will post on our Facebook group pictures of Star Wars Christmas trees and Wonder Woman socks because they see nerdy stuff and they think of us. <laughs> so we have that brand association. And it that matches your story as well. Yes, exactly. So that's, that was the first thing. Uh, the second thing that we worked on was authority content content that was very well executed in terms of the quality of both the content and the production value of it. So we didn't just want to launch a web TV show and it just be a generic, you know, vlog that I recorded, you know, at my house on my computer with no lighting and a crappy camera. We had a whole intro video. We have um, transitions, we have special effects we do in them, we have, uh, I bought a very high quality camera, I invested in learning a whole lot about videography, um, this is, uh, th we actually had a video set, a studio in my house, we transformed it into a gym, and now, now that the, the renovations are done in our house, we're moving the gym, um, a home, the, our home gym somewhere else, and we're making this the video studio again, um, and so, we'll, you know, we'll have a very high quality studio set up again. And we did the same thing with the podcast. We invested a whole lot into probably 60 grand in the first year of our podcast. And we made all of that money back because it was very high quality. Um, so, so first you worked thing. on the brand, then high yeah. quality content to, to establish yeah. the authority. Yep. That was number two. And then the third thing was I went and I got a lot of publicity. Because uh, publicity is one of those things where when p even if you don't necessarily generate traffic or sales from it, which we did, but that wasn't the primary purpose. Uh, so even if you don't do those things, it still serves as a way to add to your credibility. And so we went out and we did a publicity push and I did a podcast tour where I went on 50 podcasts in 60 days, including really big name ones like Entrepreneur on Fire. I got myself onto Fast Company multiple times, um, Forbes, uh, the New York Times. Uh, I was one of the top 30 entrepreneurs under 30 from two different places, Influence of Magazine and the Tampa Bay Business Journal. And it all happened. Uh, the podcasts were within a 30-day period, and then the rest was within the, the, the next 60-day period, so 90 days total, which is huge amounts of publicity. All this time, you were just focused on the brand, and you were not selling anything? You're not offering anything? Just the um, brand? I don't think so. I, uh, or are you doing coaching? I just, already had, right? well, so I already had a consistent flow of income. So I wasn't 
try, I mean, obviously if people came to me just from like funnels or from my website or from my group and they asked to have a sales call and I could sell them into something, I did. But I wasn't doing intentional launches mm. until the branding, the authority content and the publicity was done. At that point, that's when I finally did a launch. And that's why it was so successful. And the launch was for what kind of an offer? It was for a premium price program because that was, the, that was the other piece. I said, you know what, if I establish myself well enough as an authority, if I am credible enough, I can charge premium for what mm. I know. I'm, I'm valuable. I am valuable, but I just need to prove it. I need to, I need to show, I need to make it so that my market can see that value. And once they can, they'll pay for it. So we launched uh, one $5,000 certification where I would allow people, if they pass the certification, to rebrand and resell cash injection campaigns as their own to their clients. So if you're like a business, a sales, a marketing coach, a branding so, so coach, it's your, whatever, it's your method for... It's my method, yeah. my system for helping my clients make money. And if you're a coach and you want to get your clients better results, well, stop trying to figure it out. Just take my system because my system works. So just pass the certification and then you can rebrand and resell it as your own. I'll give you a license for it. So that was $5,000. It was online or it was like telling uh, like, you know, calls or masterminds. How, how did you give them the certification? So first I taught them how to do cash injections themselves. And I required that they actually get results with it themselves because I don't want people selling my stuff unless they've proven they know how to do it. No, I mean That's the model. Idea. How did you communicate that to them? Like, what's the model? Oh, uh, sell it. No, I mean, like, how did you have the call? It was a calls or like video calls or like meetings offline to. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just mm -hmm. like this, you know, Zoom, Skype, okay. that type of thing, just video calls, and then. Um, I taught them how to teach it to their clients, same sort of way, it was video calls, and then I taught them how to sell it, and I said, okay, go out and sell it, and you need to prove to me that you can get your clients results, because again, this is my name on it, if I'm going to let you rebrand and resell my material, you need to prove yourself as a coach, so it's very difficult to so, get certified. So they changed the name, for it became their own brand, but they're using the same method, and, and, they, like, and, they, and they don't pay you like a licensing fee or something. No, I, I, I started a licensing fee when I first did it, and then I, I honestly, I like simplicity, so I didn't want to have to keep up with it. It was mm. just going to be a pain in the butt, so I, was, mm. I said, it'll be a win-win. You don't have to pay the licensing fee, and I don't have to deal with managing it. Mm. <laughs> so I just made so, it simple, and it was a flat fee. <laughs> what, what kind of models you're seeing now that really works for uh, online coaches? So premium, pr premium price leverage programs, meaning one to many, where you're the coach and you're serving multiple clients at once and you're charging 5,000, 10,000, 30, 50, even up to 100K is what we're seeing both ourselves and our clients doing very successfully. Um, masterminds are a huge part of our model. So that $562,000 launch, the certification was the first offer. Uh, we sold a mastermind as well. I think when we sold it at that point, it was somewhere between 10,000 and 18,000. Now it's 24 to 28,000, depending upon how early you, you sign up. You know, if you sign up on the call, we give you a $4,000 discount. If you sign up after the call, it's 28K, you lost the discount. Um, so uh, that, was, that was a big part of, the bulk of the income in that $562,000 launch was mastermind sales. And that's been a, a staple part of our business ever since. You know, we typically, if we don't go an entire year selling anything, we'll still make a minimum of 500, 750K. So almost a million just off of that one offer, even if we don't sell anything for the whole year, just, just because we have the mastermind. So they're very, very lucrative. And is it like you have to keep launching it to collect certain, convert certain number of clients and then have them, you know, go through the certification or how that works, how your funnel work? So we do it two ways. 
You can either get into it from an automated sales funnel where you opt in for a video training and then we immediately send them to the video. So it's not like an on-demand webinar where it runs every hour on the hour like a lot of these webinar gurus do because we saw that, that you would only see probably about 50, maybe 70% of the people actually showing up to the webinar, whereas if you give them access to it instantly, about 90, 94% will actually watch the video. So it's a much, my, much higher show up rate and it's significantly easier to set up. So uh, you send them to an opt-in page, they go immediately to the video, inevitably they watch the video. It's a longer webinar. So in the thank you page you have a video? So, uh, yes, on the thank uh, you page we have a video, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then uh, it's a longer video, so at about the hour mark is when we pitch our mastermind. And then we have about an hour long pitch because we do three pitches just in case. We answer all the questions, all of the objections people might have, all right there, and then they can schedule a call. So. We, and we play like video testimonials, we have br uh, promo videos for our so, retreats. So it's like a webinar system, same webinar it pitch, is. but then you yes. pitch a call? You don't pitch the offer? We, we pitch the offer and they, can, they have to get, I mean, they have to get on a call to get into the mastermind because we have to make sure they're a fit for it. And it's a higher priced program, so most people are not going to pay $24,000 just straight off of a webinar. But they will get on a phone call to discuss a $24,000 offer. So we do the webinar, we do the pitch for the mastermind, get them on the phone, and then we can sell them from there. So that's, uh, that's the So one before the call, they don't pay anything. You just get them to a strategy call and then you offer them what they need or what, what Yeah, what and it's offer. not a strategy call, it's a sales mm. call because they know okay. the offer. You know, a lot of people when they set up their sales funnels, they're beating around the bush and they're getting people on sales call or they're getting people on discovery calls or coaching calls or strategy calls and they haven't told the person anything about the offer so you have to introduce the offer on the call which is not a whole lot of time to do it and you need an uh, hour for that like half an hour to an hour to 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 have a discovery call then you transition into a uh, conversion but in your yeah. in your case as a as a sales call how long usually it takes uh, well, so we still do about 30 to 45 minutes, but that's because we take contracts on the phone mm -hmm. and we onboard them on the phone. Uh, so that's about a 15 or so minute process. We have to send them the contract, get them to sign it, take the credit card, make sure that it processes, uh, make sure they have their welcome email, they're in the portal, uh, that they're in their Slack channel, all of that. So we make sure they're 100% set up. We don't like to be in limbo, so we don't want to get off of a phone call and not have an answer from someone. If it's a yes, okay, we're going to sign you up right here on the phone and we'll give you a $4,000 um, you know, rewards promotion, you know, th that amount off because of that. And if you don't sign up on the phone, we you know, they can come to us when they're ready. <laughs> That's just kind of the way that we work. Because <laughs> we want all of our attention going to our clients, the people who are committed, who are ready, who are taking action, who want that momentum, who believe in us. And, uh, is you know, it, is it the time the limited? Around, like within how long they get the certification? If you have enjoyed today's episode, I would like to invite you to check out efficientpreneurclub.com. The Efficientpreneur Club is the right membership for you. If you've been working to grow your business for a while now and things aren't happening as fast as you want. If you are tired of generic courses, secretive gurus and expensive mentors who charge $2,000 to $5,000 a month then fob you off onto sub-coaches or connect with you in group coaching calls. If you are already stressed out about your business model, sales, productivity, team and systems. If you are scrambling in the evenings and on the weekends and you never have time for yourself and your family, those problems are not going to fix themselves unless you fix them today. Why? Because your business profitability and performance are not going to change unless you do and your relationships and health will continue to be affected. Building and scaling a business becomes so stressful over time, but it doesn't have to be that way. The Efficientpreneur Club is a private and affordable one-on-one -on -one business coaching club for business owners and entrepreneurs who want to build and scale their business profitability and performance with less time, effort and cost and without risking their freedom. 
the Efficientpreneur Club will help you take your business to the next level with a private and affordable individual coaching with me personally. I tailor the program to your unique needs. I will help you clarify your direction, set a strategic action plan, and guide you step by step to build and scale your business efficiently. The Efficientpreneur Club will also provide access to an extensive how-to video library, the most highly recommended tools, and a supportive community of like-minded business owners to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice. The Efficientpreneur Club is the perfect place to be if you want to maximize your profits, minimize your workload, and scale your freedom and efficiency. So check it out at EfficientpreneurClub.com and say bye-bye to generic courses, secretive gurus, and expensive mentors. The certification is a separate offer. It's a totally separate offer. There's the certification is program number one. Mastermind is program number two. They're two completely different things. Um, it's just in that one launch, the five hundred and sixty-two thousand dollar launch, we use the certification as a way to kind of um, activate some initial so, so buyers. So the, ma the mastermind is cheaper. No, the mastermind is twenty-four thousand okay. dollars. The certification is five thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, no, you're the <laughs> and, and how long they ta how long it takes them to to finish the certification? The certification uh it, at this point we've automated it. So it's do it at your own pace. Most people can finish it in around 90 days. Um but you can take as long or as, as you can do it as quickly as you want. Uh the mastermind is a year long program. Okay. And have you tried other models like memberships or other Yes. You know, have you We've seen other coaches? <laughs> have you seen things working for other coaches and it didn't work for you? And what's working in the industry in general? Yeah, so we, I mean, we've been doing this long enough. We've tried just about everything. We've done private coaching, VIP days, masterminds, high ticket group programs, low ticket group programs, membership programs, paid discovery calls, free discovery calls, intensives, live events, like everything. We've tried everything, DIY courses, you know, and what we found is that private coaching, not very scalable, good to do in the beginning, but after that, you've got to grow out of it. Um, same thing with VIP days. Uh, VIP days are lucrative, they're easy to sell, but they're not very scalable, so eventually you grow out of it. Um, we found that high ticket group coaching programs, uh, they just don't get as great of a result for the client as say a mastermind, which is still a high ticket group program, but it's so much more hands-on and you're so much more accessible. So we tend to not sell that just purely for ethical reasons. Um, low ticket group programs also sell very well, but again, it's harder to get results for your clients in that low level of access capacity. And uh, you don't make as much as when you sell premium. You know, when you sell low ticket programs, typically, that, typically if you want to hit, if all you're trying to do is 100,000, 200,000, something like that, sure, you can sell low ticket, mid ticket offers. But if you want to hit 500K, 750K, a million, if you have big goals, income goals, you're, you've gotta start doing premium price programs because it will be so unbelievably difficult to do it without that. You'll have to sell so much volume mm. of a membership site, um, a low ticket group program, one-off intensives, one-off VIP days, anything like that. You'll have to sell so many of them in order to hit those big revenue goals. And so the premium is where it's at and win-win because it's premium, you give more access to your clients, and so they get better results. <laughs> uh, have you noticed with the low tickets, like our memberships, like most people, uh, they are excited at the beginning, and then once they sign up, they, they just don't take action, and then they unsubscribe? So, I mean, with any program, there's always going to be some percentage of clients who kind of fall off. That that always happens. We try to minimize it as much as humanly possible because we're very, very avid about our client results. We actually track them. We have a spreadsheet where when our clients get financial results, we put it into the spreadsheet and then we kind of track return on investment and things like that. Uh, but no, I, I mean, There's in comparison people. with with the, with the high tickets, because with the high tickets, usually you charge them in advance. 
So they don't have an option like when people sell two thousand oh, dollars or three thousand. Even when people have paid high ticket, there are still people who in any program lower mm. high ticket. There mm. is still people who end up dropping off, but it's only about ten percent. Uh, in in our experience, in other coaching programs, I I have heard uh, that th that for most coaches, and this is also what I've experienced just from being in as a participant other coaches programs uh, for specifically low mid ticket type of programs, memberships, group programs that only 10% actually see results, that only 10% even take action and the other 90% just kind of fall off. So the, the success rate, the completion rate on those lower and mid ticket offers is very, very, very low for most coaches. We track that stuff even for mid um, and low ticket. For example, with um, some of our courses and our lower ticket certifications, you're not allowed to move on to the next step until you've finished the first step. It tags you as you go along. Or in some cases, if we release it all at once, we still tag you so that we can see completion rates and we can kind of track the success that our clients are having. And you know, th this, is, this is a win-win type of thing. It's really great for our clients because we're making sure we're doing right by our clients and we can really hone in on what's working and what's not for them and make our programs more and more successful. But it's also good for us because if our clients are completing their stuff, they'll keep buying. <laughs> but, but it's completing the course or like they have to complete certain personal milestone in terms of results in order to go to the next well, step? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it depends upon the program. There are some programs that we have that are very, very um, uh, information-based. It's courses. And so, I mean, success, the most I can track is it's it is completion of it. You know, if you're paying $197, I'm not going to be spending the time to go and find out if you've actually executed everything and made money. But I will track if you finish the course. Um, mm -hmm. If you're paying $5,000, okay, sure. I'll track if you've made money. I'll put it into my spreadsheet. If you're paying twenty four, twenty eight thousand dollars, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a lot of access, and so we're gonna be tracking just about everything. And with the uh, how do you compare that with the open access of like w now your course is like it sounds like a journey, like they have to complete certain milestones and journey. How about the open, ongoing, recurring coaching that has no certain agenda in it how did how did you, you know find it? Uh, that's interesting because up until recently that hasn't been something that we've offered we've we've been very firm on you know if you're working with us there's a goal in mind there's a specific outcome that we're trying to work on so like if you're in operation cash flow mastermind we're creating two sales funnels and the entire year is about getting those those sales funnels built automated traffic going to them, they're creating a return on investment, you have passive income, you've got sales calls coming onto your calendar in a recurring basis, all based on those two, two sales funnels. Um, if you're in the cash injection program or the cash injection certification, the whole goal is you're just making as much money as possible as quickly as possible. If you're in our list building program, it's you're just building your list. Um, and so when it came to recurring type of programs, we really only had two options. It was you could hire us to do your Facebook ads, or you could hire us to do your publicity for you, and that was the only thing we offered on a recurring basis. Um, we actually just finished the copy for a new program that we're going to be releasing that, uh, actually two new programs that we're going to be releasing, both of which the, the sole intention is if you have questions, if you need help brainstorming, if you just need someone to talk to, you can do that. It's kind of like a membership. Mm. So you know, you can, you can, the, so one of them we're calling the 90 day accelerator and that's with our team. Cause we, I mean, we have a huge team. We've, we've built up an infrastructure. We've had the same team for years. They're amazing at what we do, what they do. I mean, I don't even write my own copy. I haven't for years. Uh, so the copywriter is, in, is incredible. He's in there. Uh, and uh, so with the 90 day accelerator, what we'll be setting it up, how we'll be setting it up is you come in, we help you map out your 90 day plan because we do that in our business. We create 90 day plans every single solitary quarter and that's how we map out everything that we're doing. That's how we delegate everything that we're doing. That's how we're constantly keeping momentum. And so we'll help you to do that. And then over the next 90 days, you get access in a private Slack channel, you get access um, 
to uh, one on one coaching calls with our team every single solitary week. So private calls. And then uh, a step down from that is our BAM Academy, where um, it's the same it's the same sort of principle, but it's group. So mm -hmm. one is one is group and one is private. Tell me more about funnels, like what kind of funnels is working now for coaches or like the ones that you're experimenting with? So we have tried pretty much every type of funnel, uh, tripwire funnels, webinar funnels, video funnels, challenge funnels, uh, all, all the funnels, all the funnels. <laughs> and our two favorites are tripwire funnels and webinar funnels, but we do them, uh, we only do them in, in each one, we only do two different ways. So there's two tripwires that we, we do, two webinars that we do, and that's it. Those are our specialties. We have zero intentions of working on any other type of funnel, <laughs> um, unless we get bored. Uh, <laughs> so the tripwire funnel, the, one of the ways that we do it is we sell a mid-ticket offer, something between $300 and $1,000. And so you'll opt in, and then on the thank you page, you have 20 minutes to get the offer for 50% off. If you don't get that, the next 48 hours, we follow up via email and you can get it for 25% off. And then after that, if you still don't get it for the next 48 hours, you can get it at regular price. And surprisingly enough, people buy at every single solitary price point because sometimes they're just not ready to buy it. Uh, so and, that's, and you present that's, the offer on the thank you page by a video, which also one hour or like shorter uh, type? No, we don't. No, we don't do videos uh, uh, for those. It's just a sales page. It's like okay. they go straight from the opt-in right to the sales page. There's like they don't they don't get the free gift until they look look at their email, and we delay that free gift email for about five, ten, fifteen minutes. So, so they get the, they get into the sales page on a thank you page, and yep. then they have a deadline of a discount, right? Exactly. Okay. So we just try to make the offer extremely uh, no-brainer and very congruent with the free gift. You know, most people, they have to do webinars and challenges and videos because, let's be honest, their offers suck. And or <laughs> uh, the, the freebie is not congruent enough with the paid offer. And so you have to do all of this explanation and persuasion to get people to buy. We will typically take our Three hundred to a thousand dollar offer, and pull one thing out of it, and give that as the free gift. So yeah, it's so very, it's, so very if, if it's a one thousand offer, you offer them like five hundred dollars, and for like two yeah. days, and then you follow up in the emails and offer twenty five uh, percent, and then then yeah. then the price goes up. And, yep, and, exactly. And, and then what's the next? Before the next offer, before the next offer, I want to ask you about the webinars in general like people still staying one hour is it still working like before or like people already oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean that's a hundred percent dependent upon your presentation skills hello Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. <laughs> but okay, I don't know it, what it, it stopped at your presentation skills. So continue okay. from there. <laughs> yeah. So it's 100% dependent on your presentation skills. I can get people to stay on an entire two hour webinar with like a 90% stick rate. So most people will actually stay the entire way. It really depends upon your ability to present and structure the webinar in a way that persuades people to stay until the end. So you have to put a lot of intention into that stick strategy. But if you, if you do a good job with it, absolutely people still watch webinars and they still watch them all the way for a very long time. Okay, so after the, you know, the follow-up emails, then how do you present the next offer to them? So, well that, so that's funnel number one. Funnel number two, is we do a mid-ticket, or sorry, <laughs> a tripwire funnel into 
a high ticket offer. And so this is very simple. It's just, we give them a free gift, and then on the thank you page, it is a sales page for our high ticket offer that explains our high ticket offer so they know exactly what we're trying to sell, and it just says, okay, click here to schedule a call, and they'll, they'll click to schedule a call, they'll get on the phone with us. Now, if, in, if they go through that and they don't schedule, we follow up with six to even up to 14 days worth of emails, just bring them right back to that same sales page where we explain the high ticket offer. So and it's very simple, it's so extremely direct. How much is the high ticket offer? For that funnel, I found the most success with price points between $2,000 and $10,000. Usually above that, you need to do a different type of funnel, which I'll get to in a second. Okay. So for these two offers, can you give me some like bullet points about what the value that they're going to get so the audience can understand like what's the offer of 300 to 1000 versus the offer of $2,000 to $10,000? So the $300 to $1,000 offer for the first type of funnel is usually a mixture of courses and, and, and templates. So for example, we've done one where it was the Little Black Launch Book and it had a bunch of launch trainings, but it also had a ton of launch templates like launch um, sales page and sales email templates for VIP days, for private coaching, for group coaching, for masterminds, for uh, courses, like any type of offer that you could think of, you're going to get a sales page and sales email templates for it. So very valuable. Uh, then for the 2000 to 8000, that could be a VIP day. Or in our case, we do done for you services. So mm -hmm. the main funnel, we, the main service we do that for is our uh, PR services, where we're actually managing your PR for you. That's what we sell on that. Um, done that for you, you do funnel. mainly Facebook ads and PR? Funnels we do, and Facebook done, ads. we do done for you sales funnels, done for you list building, done for you PR, done for you websites, and done for you Facebook ads, yeah. And what's the average you charge recurring for that? For recurring services, so for the, the PR and the Facebook ads, those are both anywhere from 2000 to 4000 a month, depending upon the package. Now, we do have a $100,000 package that includes all of our done-for-you services, our entire team, but we only give that to about five, ten max people per year, and they're usually very high level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the second funnel? The second would be webinars. Mm. So for webinars, you can do it one of two ways. You can either have a webinar where you sell a mid-ticket offer between $1,000 and $2,000. And it's, I mean, honestly, it's basically the same sort of thing as, as the other offer. It's usually a course with templates. Uh, you're just selling it uh, at a different price point in, in a different way. So it's, it's, the same, it's pretty much the same offer. You're just kind of trying it a different way. And so for that one, it's just like what I was describing before. You opt in, you instantly, immediately on the thank you page, go to the video. And then on the video, once you're done the 45-minute to one-hour webinar, you start pitching your paid offer. And you spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour pitching your paid offer one mm -hmm. to three times. And you send them directly to the order form. And then if they don't buy, you follow up via email and you send them to the sales page. Okay. So uh, No call uh, in that, just like follow-up no sequence. Yeah, okay. exactly. And then you can also do the webinar going to a high ticket offer. And that, uh, if you're going to do it that way, I recommend $10,000 or more mm. for that offer. Because a webinar, especially one that goes into phone calls, is a lot of work. So you want to make sure that it's worth it. And usually the people who get on the phone are very highly qualified because they've sat through a two-hour webinar. So that, well, that's What's that the conversion rate about. for each funnel that you're seeing for your clients? Oh, that's a loaded question. Uh, there's so many data. There are so many p points of data. Hmm. Um, so I, I can just give you some return on investment examples. So, for example, uh, with a mid-ticket offer, 
we, uh, so, sorry, with a mid-ticket tripwire, um, if you put in about, let's say, 8,000, you might pop back out 15,000. So about $2 to every $1, something like that. Um, those are not as lucrative with your profit margins. And I, I, I do them mainly to get self-liquidating leads. I want to cover the cost of my ad spend. But, but why, if, they, it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it keeps converting at that 100% uh, you know, rate, so why don't just do more of it? Oh, you absolutely can. Yeah, mm -hmm. you absolutely can. Um, Especially if the offer you're not exchanging time for money, it's just a course or like something online. Yeah, most people don't do that because they don't know how to scale ads. But, you know. They, they don't we, have, sorry? They, they don't know. Most people don't do that because they don't know how to scale ads. Because okay. ads are very difficult to scale. Most people mm. think that it's just a matter of putting in more money into ads that work, and it's not. It's usually about creating more ads, yeah, and they complex, each have like yeah. smaller ad spend, but that takes a lot of work. Um, then for a tripwire funnel going into phone calls, that one, let's say you spend... $8,000, you might make like $36,000. So that one has a higher, I mean, anytime you're selling premium, you're going to have a higher return on investment. And um, in tripwires, you don't use like small, like, you know, books to sell at the beginning and then offer or just always like a lead magnet into like 300 to 1000 or higher. We have, we've done book funnels for our clients. They, uh, you have to write book though and like that's Take so things. much work yeah. <laughs> that's so much work so I don't yeah. want to have to do that <laughs> I don't want to yeah. make my clients do that so we keep it simple simplicity is sanity <laughs> we actually just landed a li literary agent who um, scouted me and uh, wants to get me into bookstores all across the U.S. so I might actually finally write a book. We'll see. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so then webinars, if you're going into a $1,000 to $2,000 offer, if you spend $8,000, probably around the same thing as the other funnel, you get about $36,000 back, but that one's not done for you, so it's, you know, about the same profit margin, but slightly easier delivery, much easier delivery. <laughs> And then for a, uh, a webinar funnel going into high ticket, uh, going into high ticket offers like ten thousand dollars or more, that one has a, co a higher cost per acquisition because the lead is paying so much more, um, but they're also paying so much more. So <laughs> if you spend about a thousand, three thousand, a thousand to three thousand, depending upon how well you optimize the funnel, you'd make about twenty to thirty thousand dollars. So you know per I month or that. like well just um or like in, how in much you time. invest in ads to get the twenty thousand. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If you spent a thousand to three thousand, something like that, you'd get twenty to thirty thousand dollars back. Okay. Can you take us through your work life Routine. What do you do from the time you wake up until you sleep? Uh, and is it uh, the same routine or you change it every day? Uh, no, it's, it's usually the same. So Mondays are my company internal call days. So typically I'm waking up around 9.30 and then from 9.30 to 12, I'm on internal company calls. Then from 12 to 2, I'm eating lunch with my hubby. And then from two to four, I'm in internal company calls. And then after that, I work out with my trainer. And then I'm done for the day. Um, so Tuesday is call day, or Monday is call day. <laughs> Tuesday, I do client calls. So I'll have from 10 to 11 a.m., I'll do, you know, Q&A and calls and things like that. Then um, I'll work until 12 on whatever my weekly commitments are for the company. 12 to 2, I do lunch with my husband. I do that every day. And then from 2 to like 5-ish, I'm working on whatever I'm supposed to be working on. Um, Wednesday, 
from 10 to 12, I work on whatever I'm supposed to be working on, and then I go to lunch from 12 to 2 with my husband. Um, 2 to 4, I work on whatever I'm supposed to be working on, and then I go to the gym with my trainer. Um, Thursday is the same exact thing. 10 to 12 is work, 12 to 2 is lunch, 2 to 4 is work, and then I go to the gym and work out with my trainer. And um, Friday is uh, similar to Tuesday. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> any, any softwares that helped you like scale your business or it worked, it works always for most coaches that you recommend to automate or like to scale their business or productivity? Infusionsoft, ClickFunnels, Access Ally, uh, Airtable, what is What is Access Ally and what is uh, something table? What is <laughs> uh, so Access Ally is our membership site uh, software. It's okay. how we deliver our courses. It's mm. uh, it's a membership platform, and it integrates with Infusionsoft. So mm. that's why we use it. Uh, and it's so it's just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful um for uh platform. platform. Natalie Natalie Lucier created it. She's amazing. Uh, and then Airtable is what we use for like task management, outlining mm. who's supposed to be doing what, like tracking Asana, time, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, top three mentors. Mentors? Uh, Alex Sharfin, Kendall Summerhawk, and Jody Jealous. Top three books. No BS Direct Marketing by Dan Kennedy. Made to Stick. I think that's done. I think that's Dan Heath. I don't have a third one. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Just two. <laughs> what, what makes you fulfilled? Mm, being intellectually stimulated <laughs> and having the ability to feel autonomy and ownership over my life and my schedule last question yeah. how people can contact you well if you go to market like a nerd.com forward slash training that is uh what the, well, that's our our webinar funnel <laughs> so if you go to market like a nerd.com forward slash training uh, what you'll see there is a webinar that we've created that walks you through how I built a multiple six-figure coaching business working part-time hours and taking 10 plus vacations per year. Um, so it walks you through what I, so essentially it, it walks you through how I, I did that $562,000 launch. Obviously we make way more than that now, but um, for most people they can't even think about seven figures, like that's just too far ahead for them. And so we like to tailor our content to where our where our clients heads are at so we're sticking with just like a level just one level below where we're at um, and one level above where most of our clients are at and so uh, we'll take a look at what is the offer that we sold how did we sell it um, what that funnel and that process looks like and just kind of show you how to apply that to your business and then once you're done watching the webinar um, if you want to work more with us it'll talk about how to do that Thank you so much, Amanda, for, for your time and being on the Efficientpreneur Show. really appreciate the in-depth numbers and information about the coaching industry. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I, I hope that you guys learned a lot and that you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks, everyone, and see you soon with another leading expert. Thanks for watching or listening. It means the world to me if you would leave an honest review of the show on iTunes or any other podcast platform that you are listening through. And big thanks to all the people who have already reviewed the show. Discover how to build and scale your business profitability and performance with less time, effort, and cost. Check out Efficientpreneur.com.